So here we go with the summary. So we are done with the angle pairs formed when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So remember, um, the first here, the first thing here in the list is alternate exterior angles, followed by alternate interior angles, then vertical angles, corresponding angles, supplementary angles, and consecutive interior angles. If you remember, alternate exterior angles, look at that. They're, be, they're being colored. Purple, color purple, yeah. Um, their exterior angles, look at that. One is in the right, the other is in the left. Also, um, this angle here at the side of the angle being colored is also an alternate exterior with the side or the angle beside this colored angle. In other words, we will have or we can create out of this figure, we can create two pairs. Two pairs of alternate exterior angles. And take note, they are always, they are always congruent. Alternate interior angles, the one colored orange. Alternate interior. Alternate because one is in the left, the other is in the right. Interior because they are on the inside of the parallel lines. Okay? And we can also make two pairs of alternate interior angles out from this figure. This two colored orange here and the angles that are at the side of each of them are also called alternate interior angles. Next, vertical angles. Remember vertical angles? We can make a lot of vertical angles actually here from this figure. But then these colored angles here, colored pink, yeah, is an example of a pair of vertical angles. Another pair are angles opposite to each other which are at the side of each of these colored pink. Okay? Next, corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, remember, corresponding because they are on the relative position of or relative position in the transversal, crossing the parallel lines. Here, colored green. Yeah. So one is in the upper no, outside or exterior of one line here among the parallel lines, while the other is in the interior. Of course, so they are corresponding angles. Another corresponding pair of angles will be the angles here um, below, below these colored angles, angles colored green. So this one, uh, this angle here is a corresponding angle with the angle here below this second angle that is colored green okay and corresponding angle angles are what yes they are also congruent now supplementary angles of course supplementary angles if you remember the definition um, they are angles that are um, having a total of 180 degrees when you add up the measure so that means to say, when they are situated side by side, they form a linear pair. They form a line. So that is why these two angles colored green are supplementary angles. Because look at that. You don't need to know the measurement of these two angles. The fact that they form a straight line when they are being at the side of each other, so they are called supplementary angles. We are sure that their sum is 180 degrees okay next is consecutive interior angles just like the angles here colored blue they are consecutive because you know if you start from here you go down so one is next to the other interior because they are on the inside of the parallel lines Okay, and what does it say? Are they are they congruent? No, this time um, they may not be congruent. They are supplementary. Yes, it says the angles that lie on the same side of the transversal between the two lines. Yes, and the two lines here in this example, the parallel lines. I hope you learned something from our discussion today on. Um, 
angles or relationship of angles are formed by parallel lines cut by a chance versa. So I hope everything has been transpired uh, very well and very well understood as well. Let us have an exercise. So I want you to look at our whiteboard in order for you to understand better again. So I will draw parallel lines here. Let's call it a line one, line two. And there is a line that crosses. Therefore, we call this as the transversal. Okay? With the transversal, we're able to create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 angles. Supposing this angle here measures 100. 20 degrees okay and I'd like to ask what is the measure of this angle here what do you think is the measure of this angle okay. try to remember or recall the relationship of angles of um, parallel lines cut by transversal so, um, in our discussion a while ago, the relationship between these two angles, as you notice, these two angles are formed by two lines that cross. This line here, the transverse of this one line, or line one. So, we call them as vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are always congruent. Therefore, this is also 120 degrees. Okay? How about this angle here? So, this angle, the measure of this angle must be taken from or must be based from any of the two prior angles. Let's try to see which between these two angles is having a relationship with this third angle. Okay, recall. Of course, this should be the angle that has a relationship with this third angle. The 120 degree angle here is related to this third angle. In what way? So these two angles are called consecutive interior angles. Consecutive. And if you remember... Consecutive, consecutive interior angles. Okay, let's just use initials. Consecutive interior angles are not congruent, but or are not supplementary. Are not necessarily congruent, but they are supplementary. So if they are supplementary, this angle should measure. Supplementary means the total or the sum is 180. So to make it a sum of 180, this should be. 60 degrees, right? Next angle. Let's take this angle here. Our fourth mystery angle. What do you think is the measure of this angle? So obviously, this angle must measure 60 degrees. Why? So for the question why, you must have a lot of reasons. First reason is this angle is is related to this angle here. In what way? This angle, let's call this angle angle. Since this is the third, let's call this angle C, and this let's call this angle D. Angle C and D or D and C are what you call the corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles. And if they are corresponding angles, they must measure equally or they are congruent. By the way, symbol for congruent, remember, it's this one. Okay, there's a plus sign and then lying letter S. So, corresponding angles are congruent. Next angle, let's name this angle E. What is the measure of angle E? 
But let me go back to Angle C and D because I said a while ago that we have we can make a lot of reasons when this angle D should measure 60 degrees and I just gave one reason that this angle D is a corresponding angle with angle C. How about another reason? Another reason could be angle D is, is adjacent to this angle. Let's name this angle E A. And angles D and A form a linear pair or they form a straight line. Therefore, they should sum up to 180. So that's why this must be 60 degrees because we already have this angle to be 120. So that is the second reason. That is the, the second way of finding the measure of this angle D that is in relation to this given angle A that's 120. Also, you can also base your answer 60 degrees from this given angle here. How about naming this angle to be angle D? So, we can also get 60 basing on the measure of angle B because this angle B and D also form a straight line. So, if it is a straight line that is 180 degrees, they are supplementary too. So, to make this 60, we just have to subtract 180 minus 120. So, this is really 60 for three reasons, okay? Let's go back to angle E. I was asking what is the measure of angle E. There are also a lot of ways to find the measure of angle E. So, what's the measure? Yes, this must be 120 degrees. Why? First and foremost, this angle E is related to angle A. This is A. In what way? Remember, angle A and angle E are, or as you can see, angle A and E are on the opposite sides of the transversal. One is on the left, while well, the other is on the right. However, they are both on the exterior part. So we call A and E to be to be alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles. And if they are alternate exterior angles, they are they are congruent. Yeah. Congruent. That's why this should be 180 degrees. And if this is 180, um Another reason could be is that they are or it is it is supplementary to angle C. Why? Because they also form a linear pair. Okay? They form a line. Another reason why this should be 120 degrees is that it is also related to angle B. B. What is the measurement or what is the relationship between angle B and E? Do you remember? They are, yes, they are corresponding angles. Just like D and C, they are corresponding angles also B and E. That is why that should be, this should be 120 degrees because corresponding angles are always congruent. Next, let's have this angle here. Let's name this angle F. What is the measure of angle F? That must be easy. Yes, angle F is yeah, 60 degrees. For many reasons. One could be this angle F is vertical. Is a vertical angle with angle D. This is 60, so this must be 60. Another reason could be this angle F is alternate interior angle with angle C. Alternate interior angle with... So, what are the two angles that are alternate interior angle here? They are F and C. So, if they are alternate interior angles, that means they are also congruent. Another reason, third reason could be this must be 60 because that also forms a line or a linear pair with angle A. Look at that. This is a line. So 120 plus 60, that should be 180. 
also from this side here. They form a straight line. So, they should give us a hundred.